Aloha and welcome to At the Crossroads. I'm your host, Keisha King, and I'm here every Wednesday live at 5 on thinktechhawaii.com and on Facebook on the Think Tech Hawaii page. And you can also catch me after the show on YouTube on the Think Tech Hawaii channel. You go there and you can go directly to the At the Crossroads playlist. So, you guys, we are back again this week, and I am so excited that you are joining me for this show today. We have music, education, and as you know, if I'm here, it's always going to be lots of fun and positivity. Before we get started, though, I want to tell you about my fantastic weekend. I attended several events, one of which was the uh, Honolulu Jazz, I'm sorry, Honolulu Africa. American Film Festival. Okay, now it was amazing this year. Um, and I want to tell you that I had the privilege of going to both the reception and the movie. The first movie I saw I thought was absolutely amazing was, let's see, I saw Miles Davis, The Birth of the Cool. Let's just stop right there. Miles Davis is one of my favorite, favorite jazz musicians. So I had a great time with that. Let's go back a little bit. And I want to tell you, I also saw 21 and Done, which was also amazing. Uh, this weekend, we're going to go back to Jazz Minds. And I told, I also got the opportunity to go to Jazz Minds and see one of our guests there. We have two guests on our show today. Uh, I absolutely love jazz music. So when I attended the film festival, I went there with the intent of participating in the Miles Davis show because of the jazz or movie because of the jazz. But then things just got just way, way too good for me to even comprehend. For example, we had Kiara C. Jones. She is going to be a guest on our show in about two weeks. So be on the lookout for that. She had her movie there, 21 and Done. Amazing movie. Lots of good feedback with that one. So we will definitely have her on here. She was the director of that uh, movie. So we'll have her on here to talk about that. Pretty cool. The last thing I did this weekend was actually not the weekend. It was yesterday. Uh, last night I saw the movie uh, Mr. Soul. Mr. Soul, absolutely amazing. Now, for those of you who are not aware, that director was Samuel D. Pollard and Melissa Hazlip. Okay. Now, Mr. Soul was a TV show uh, for black that represented Black American culture, and it happened on the heels of the civil rights movement. The host, Ellis uh, Hazlip, represented the demographic that was so different and definitely not in vogue. He gave his audience what they craved and what was missing from television, which were positive images of blackness. Black and brown, everybody was included. Now, I count it as no coincidence whatsoever that I was there. I also count it as a total privilege to be in the crowd watching this movie the night before I was to do my live recording of this show today. I sat there with my mouth wide open in delight and shock as the show used to play on public broadcasting network. And it had a lot of established stars as well as several new and upcoming artists, including poets lots of intellectual philosophical females and thought leaders of the time. So after the movie, I thought about it. I said the importance of what we do here at Think Tech Hawaii and at the Crossroads is to discuss matters that are real and relevant to you, my viewers. So it's my intent to always provide educational, entertaining and empowerment, empowering content to move you into action. Now, a person that moves someone into action is usually called an instigator, right? And when we think of an instigator, we think about something negative, like someone instigating a fight. But that's not always the case. I'm the instigator that wants to move you to action to enhance and improve your life. I want you to move forward in a positive direction and to do so with everything that happens in your life whether it's, I don't know, what you do at your job or music. We're going to do that today. 
We have not one, but two musical guests on our show today. We have Brown Man Ali with us today and Larry Luck and Henderson. So without further ado, I'm going to introduce our first guest, born in Trinidad and schooled in New York, and now splitting his time between Toronto, Canada and Brooklyn, New York, the internationally acclaimed jazz trumpet player Brown Man Ali is heralded by the New York Village Voice as Canada's preeminent jazz trumpet player and the new standard in electric jazz by the National Public Radio in New York, leading no less than a staggering eight groups of his own, all signed to his Brooklyn-based label. Now, you have to tell me the name of this. What is it? Brown Tesaurus. Brown Tesaurus Records. He spent four years touring the globe with the legendary rapper Guru of Gangstar fame. Oh, my goodness. As the featured solo for soloist for Guru's Jazzmatazz from 2006 to 2010 and has since performed with the likes of Jay-Z, Missy Elliott, Most Def, Paul Simon, Quincy James. That's a like a, a, a interesting group. <laughs> His powerful signature sound as a soloist has been compared to that of Miles Davis and Freddie Hubbard and has made him one of the most recognizable trumpet players in North America today. He's here in Hawaii on tour, and he'll be here for the month of February, performing both as a leader and featured soloist over the entire month with one of the busiest touring schedules I've seen from, visiting, from a visiting artist, which includes dates at the Blue Note, Jazz Minds, Heart Moon, Dragon Upstairs, Medici's, Gordon Biersch, and many other Honolulu's acclaimed jazz spots. His frenetic schedule ends with his award-winning show, Miles Davis, Eras, appearing at Jazz Minds, where he and some of Hawaii's best over will be playing over two sets as they take the audience through Miles' entire career of bebop to hip-hop. So, welcome, 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 welcome. To the crossroads, brown man Ali. What up? What up? What up? <laughs> Thanks for having me. Oh my gosh. Quite it's... an introduction. Did my mother send that to you? Yeah, or your mom. Me? And okay. she paid me. No kidding. Five dollars, right? Five dollars. That's, that's the arrangement. I said, Mom, it's too easy. Oh my <laughs> goodness. I am happy to have you. I am so honored. Thank you. Thanks for having me here. Yeah, it's a pleasure. It's a pleasure. Now, awards are nice. I know you've won almost every single award Jeez. possible in Canada. They're kind to me. They're very nice to me. Yeah, but I think you deserve it. Man, a lot yes. of cats deserve it, man. Well, I don't th I am not giving nothing back, but <laughs> I heard that. I don't but, blame uh, you. <laughs> but uh, but I'm honored. They're very they're very kind to me up there. It's Yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I went up I was born in Trinidad like you said and mm -hmm. uh, did all my formative training in New York City and then I went to Canada mm -hmm. when I was young and uh, and they started giving me things. It's, yeah. It's, yeah, it's good up there. I like it. Good. But, well, we are definitely happy to have you here. Thanks. I think, you know, one of the things that we don't have the pleasure of here in Hawaii is sometimes um, we'll hear about different artists. And, you know, in the States right. or on the mainland, you can just like drive two different states over and go yeah, and hear somebody real. you love. But here we are kind of waiting for someone to come. Right. right. So, yeah. you know, we're glad that you're here. Man. All these tour dates you have coming up, though. Yeah, it's, it's my fourth time in Hawaii, and uh, yes. and this year has been bananas. I think six, 16 shows I've had. Yes, and that's what the, I'm reading. And we're in the final week. We're just heading towards the end, which is great. Like today, mm -hmm. Wednesday, yeah, uh, so yesterday I played, so Tuesday, Friday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, mm -hmm. and then Saturday's my last day. And wow. It's, it's bonkers. Yesterday was a Jazz Minds, today, in about... 40 minutes, I gotta go. <laughs> I'm, I'm playing a, oh, just over Gordon Beers mm -hmm. and uh, with Pono 5, and then Thursday is uh, Herbie Hancock, mm -hmm. uh, my Herbie Hancock tribute show at uh, Jazz Minds, and Friday is Brown Man Electric Trio, but a Hawaii version of Brown Man Electric Trio. So that's my band, all my wacky tunes, that'll be fun. Mm -hmm. And then Saturday is the big closer, which is um, Miles Davis Eras, my Miles Davis tribute show, yes. um, where we're gonna start in 1947 when he was with. Charlie Parker, and then move mm -hmm. through the Coltrane period, and yes. um, Wayne Shorter, and then the Electric Era, 
and then go all the way to la the last thing he did before he died was work with hip hop artists. So right. we'll end we'll end with uh, an exploration of um, the collision of jazz and hip hop that right. Ma Miles was working with. And as a, as a jazz musician coming from Brooklyn, I've worked with a lot of as you stated earlier, yes. with a lot of hip hop artists. I right. mean, it started because of Guru, right? Mm -hmm. Four years with the legend. And, uh, well, we actually have a clip of you playing with Glue. Really? Yes. If you don't mind, we'd cool. love to show off yeah. some of what you did with them. We're going to look at... Uh, oh, man. Switzerland. This is uh, 2016, I think. Yeah? I think so. if it, it depends if it's the full band or not. Because in, mm -hmm. in 2016, we were rolling with an 11-piece band mm -hmm. all across Europe. It was insane. We would do a country a day. The mm -hmm. whole group, we would fly in and do a country day and fly out. Okay. Um, yeah, that this was this was a this was a really formative time for me because Guru would he such a personal, open, loving cat. So he would come and knock on my hotel room door and we would mm -hmm. chat about. I mean, he he for to me uh -huh. in hip hop, he ha he occupies a space really similar to Miles Davis. Oh Be really? Yeah, he was an innovator and an open mind and mm -hmm. he was I mean he invented this style of of uh, hip-hop that's now called jazz hip-hop he was mm -hmm. really the first cat to really do it right there was okay. a lot of guys dabbling in that kind right. of right I thing remember earlier. that era yeah right. but that's the that it's he was the first cat to really do it right and mm -hmm. and amalgamate those forms of uh, true true jazz and true hip-hop I mean man the trumpet players that played with him I mean Freddie Hubbard and Donald I replaced Donald Byrd in Guru's Jazzmatazz which is uh, you know, bananas. Saying a lot. Red Hot Grove, and <clears throat> yeah. yeah, and then and piano players from uh, Herbie to Chick to yes. Herbie Hancock, Chick Corea, and yes. Kenny Garrett, and so yes. you know some of the greats. The, yeah, <laughs> so I was when I got the call to do that. It was uh, actually when when I first got the call because he made the call himself, uh -huh. which he has people, right? Right. Normally you get a manager, mm -hmm. but he made the call himself, and I didn't believe it was Goo. I thought it was one of my boys messing around. Goo don't sound like that. Uh -huh. Who is this? <laughs> Those, yeah. Wow, that's crazy. That's and so then, wow. Yeah, so I grabbed 20, uh, 2006 to 2010, four world tours with the great, with the legend, and then he died yeah. of cancer in 2010, which is tragic and a yes. huge blow to hip hop, and yes. and it's you know put us all into a tailspin. But then uh, I went to uh, most deaf for a little while, mm -hmm. and then KRS One, and Big Daddy yes. Kane, and then Cool yes. Herc, and then I got the call from uh, Jay Z. I did. What um, was that like? Because Jay Z. Well, that's the call, right? Right. That's the call you want to get. Call. You're waiting to hear from somebody so, like uh, him. Yeah. How did that feel? What Superstar call. Yeah. Well, I mean, I was called just to sub because the the usual cat just couldn't do. Uh, they, it was they were in the middle of the on the run tour, okay. and they needed a guy to sub. So my, you know, they in the community they know Guru's trumpet player. So right. I got that call, and it was mind blowing. It was you know Jay Z. What do I? What can I say to that? But right. the but the real dope story for me is that Missy Elliott was in the crowd at one of those shows, uh -huh. and she she heard me playing, and she was like, "Someone give me that fool's number." So. <laughs> So now, so I do her. I'm now with Missy's uh, touring group whenever she, when she is with horns. Right. You know, uh, we're, we're, that's the thing with hip hoppers is the horn players are usually expendable. <laughs> if they, <laughs> if they need more pyrotechnic, sometimes, you know, get hired. But, right. but that, I mean, that's fine. It, yeah. I, as a soloist, it's an honor and a privilege to be able to bring what I do to that stage, you know. Mm -hmm. But I'm a jazz musician, first and foremost. And my, my little record label, um, since 2000 and, uh, I guess, 16 i've been signing other artists to the label but there's something unique about your label right yeah 100 percent of we the, have, we yeah have, tell me tell me please because this is good we make no money <laughs> <laughs> that's what's unique we don't make uh -huh. no money so um what i did is as i set up the label such in a, in a manner that all the artists on the label make 100 percent of all profits the label right. itself we make okay. zero okay. and i've wanted it to be like that because i've been signed to major labels over the years and you're lucky if you get a 82 cent royalty, you know, back right. I had, when I was on a EMI, I had an 82 cent royalty and we were, that was big, big bucks for every disc that was sold. Every $20 disc at uh, HMV, uh -huh. 82 cents. And you were like, yes. so wild. Yeah, it's terrible. So, yeah. so w with these young kids, these 20 somethings on the label, I wanted to change the game. Yeah. And so they make 100% of everything that comes in and all, all operating costs for my label that come from somewhere else. Okay. And, uh, yeah, man, for me, it's just like trying to pay it back and trying to help catalyze a new generation right. of jazz artistry being created mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and propagated. 
So you give back in a lot of different ways, but there's another thing that I want to touch on really quick because I know you have to go for your show I tonight. Do. I do. So I'm so sorry we didn't have more time. He's got, got the horn. It's already ready. ready for <laughs> us, right? So I can't wait. I'm going to be there, by the way. There's this show at Gordon Beers yeah. that's happening right after this. So yep. I'm going to follow you out as soon as I'm done here. But I heard that you're an avid, avid reader. Yeah. Like, yeah. Talk yeah, to I, us about that. I just, I, so... I just like to read a lot. I but that, I, th I think that might come from um, growing up reading and growing up around parents, like highly educated parents. My mother was a professor of uh, mathematics from the University of West Indies. Mm -hmm. I'm from Trinidad, and my father was a professor of engineering. So, right. but there is a person who likes to read a lot, and then there's a person like you. How many books are you reading a week? I read about three uh, on average. Three books a week. That ain't that much. That's a lot. I read one and a yeah. half. Three books That's, a week. I don't know. That's I a do. lot. When I, I, so I have a degree in physics. I was going to mention that. And and th like those fools are reading a lot. <laughs> like I went, <laughs> I went to school with cats that are reading like six books a week. So I don't I don't feel like anything. You know, three yeah. just seems low to me. And three three when I'm able. You mm -hmm, know, if I'm mm -hmm. if I'm touring heavily and there's a lot of time at the airport, a lot of time mm -hmm. in the hotel rooms, I tend to read mm -hmm. more. Mm -hmm. But if I'm like dealing with like the label stuff and, right. and prepping for tours and right. learning music, there's there ain't no time for that. But, but really quick, before because I know there's so much we could take hours uh, to talk next about. Year. All, yes, next please year. make sure when you come back. This is your fourth year, so we'll see year. you in year number five. Word. You'll come back right here on the show. We'll talk. We, we can fit so all the musicians one. back here. We can have a, a good a, show. Thank you. For real. Okay. Sure. Y'all heard it. We're gonna hold him to this. Okay. We got Brown Man Ali, and we're gonna go ahead and take a quick break. You want to catch him at any of his last shows here on the island for a year number four? You can do that. We'll, uh, I guess we can post some of those up. Then, sure. we, of course, and go to your website. I think your website was Brown Man Ali. Brownman.com. Um, Brownman.com. But if you want a direct link right to the shows, just go to gigs.brownman.com. G I G S. Gigs.brownman.com. Check out all his shows right here in Hawaii and all his shows everywhere. Listen, it's so great to have you. Thanks. I'm going to see you in Pono 5. Yeah, Pono 5. Pono 5. Cool. Love it. Like Love a, it. Like in 40 minutes. 40 minutes. <laughs> All right. We will see you. We'll nice be right you. back at the crossroads. Hey, aloha. My name is Andrew Lanning. I'm the host of Security Matters Hawaii, airing every Wednesday here on Think Tech Hawaii, live from the studios. I'll bring you guests. I'll bring you information about the things in security that matter to keeping you safe, your coworkers safe, your family safe to keep our community safe. Uh, we want to teach you about those things in our industry that you know may be a little outside of your experience. So please join me because security matters. Aloha. Hi, I'm Rusty Komori, host of Beyond the Lines on Think Tech Hawaii. My show is based on my book, also titled Beyond the Lines, and it's about creating a superior culture of excellence, leadership, and finding greatness. I interview guests who are successful in business, sports, and life, which is sure to inspire you in finding your greatness. Join me every Monday as we go beyond the lines at 11 a.m. Aloha. I'm Jay Fidel of ThinkTech. Our flagship energy show among the six energy shows we have is Hawaii, the state of clean energy. It plays every Wednesday at 4 p.m. Come around and see us. Learn about energy. Keep current on energy on thinktechhawaii.com. Aloha, I'm Yukari Kunisue, the host of Konnichiwa Hawaii. Japanese talk show on ThinkTech Hawaii. Konnichiwa Hawaii is all Japanese broadcast show. And it's streamed live on ThinkTech at 2 p.m. every other Monday. Thank you so much for watching our show. We look forward to seeing you then. I'm Yukari Kunisue. Mahalo. Aloha and mabuhai. My name is Emmy Ortega Anderson, inviting you to join us every Tuesday here on Pinoy Power Hawaii with Think Tech Hawaii. We come to your home at 12 noon every Tuesday. We invite you to uh, listen, watch uh, for our mission of empowerment. We aim to enrich, enlighten, educate, entertain, and we hope to empower. Again, maraming salamat po. Mabuhay and aloha. Hello, I'm Dave Stevens, host of the Cyber Underground. This is where we discuss everything that relates to computers that's just kind of scare you out of your mind. So come join us every week here 
on thinktechhawaii.com, 1 p.m. on Friday afternoons. And then you can go see all our episodes on YouTube. Just look up the Cyber Underground on YouTube. All our shows will show up. And please follow us. We're always giving you current, relevant information to protect you, keeping you safe. Aloha. Aloha and welcome back. I am Keisha King, your host. You're watching At The Crossroads, where you can catch me live at 5 on Wednesdays. All right, so we're here for our second segment where we have Larry Locke Henderson on with us. He is with Smart Hip Hop Global. All right, Larry Henderson is educated hip hop for those of us in the music business, not those of us, but those of you in the music business. He is the creator of a new sound of educational hip hop music that uniquely inspires people of all ages. His album, Lesson One Hip Hop in Education, has hit Amazon, Amazon's bestsellers list, number one in hot new releases and number eight in educational music and has received airplay on major radio stations around the world due to his combination of deep insights and authentic hip hop sound. Locke travels the country sharing his educational hip hop soul music, offering lessons on topics that are rarely discussed, including current events, history, empowerment, political science, money management, and more. CBS calls Lesson One creative, innovative, and informative. Dominion of New York Magazine says, most people use hip hop to educate, but do so badly. Locke does it so, so well. Locke is a youth activist, social critic, history and religion intellectual, and innovative education advocate. He is a hip hop ambassador and a noted speaker on the impact of the hip, hip hop culture. He holds degrees in Africana studies, communications, and labor studies from Rutgers University and studied studio engineering at the Institute for Audio Research. Locke has been featured as, at, as a host of, at a host of youth and college events, hip hop conferences, festivals, and on major radio and television program, including London, UK's Bang 103.6 FM, and so on and so on and so forth. BET here, CBS, you name it. Locke, welcome to At The Crossroads. Thank you for having me. What's going on? What's going on? It is my pleasure to have you. I am so delighted that you are able to be with us today. Where are we calling you from? Where are we reaching you right now? I'm in New Jersey right now. New Jersey. New Jersey. Um, you know, home. And uh, it, it's uh, it's cold out here. You know, and you're in Hawaii, and I know it's, it's, it's terrific weather. Uh, it, it was snowing all day today. It was nasty outside. But, um, yeah, I'm calling from New Jersey. Wow. Well, aloha. I wish I could send you some warm Thank weather. You. I do, but I can't. Yeah, me too. <laughs> Snow, I couldn't Definitely. even imagine. So please tell me, what is Smart Hip Hop Global and how is it different from other record companies? Uh, Smart Hip Hop Global, this company is designed to uh, mix education and, and hip hop. You know, the fusion of that is the music that we create. There's pretty much no other company um, that can do it the way that we do it. You know, there's definitely other, other companies that put out um, educational hip-hop music. But, uh, you know, because we come from a solid hip-hop uh, hip core, it, the, the sound is extremely different. Okay. But, um, you know, Smart Hip Hop Global is a company that's just dedicated to fusing hip-hop and education. Wow. Thank you for what you do. It sounds amazing. Um, You're welcome. Thanks. I heard you first on social media. I was just scrolling okay. through on Instagram. I saw a sponsored ad and I heard that Harriet Tubman song and I about fell out. I, I okay. could not believe how Thank intelligent you. it sounded. It told a great story and used her voice. How did you even come up with that? Uh, well, you know, Harriet Tubman was just uh, you know, if you if you know her story, uh, which a lot of people do, but then again, a lot of people don't, it's very inspirational. 
Um, so when I went into making Lesson 2, you know, I I wanted to at least honor her. I wanted to do something that told something about her life, and mm-hmm. I wanted to, uh, you know, definitely try to be as creative as I can be, but I wanted you to know her story. So, you know, I was in the studio. Um, uh, my man um, played the beat. And I'm like, this is the one, you know. This is this is this is the uh, this is the track that I'm going to do the Harriet Tubman song to. And uh, you know, I did the research, um, listened to the beat. It, it took uh, maybe about three weeks to actually put the song together. I had already been doing the research. I had already been reading about her, and I had already, you know, had had down what I wanted to say. Mm-hmm. But um, you know, it was definitely picking the track. Uh, so that it can speak to me, so that I can speak to the people. And then it was just a matter of just merging that and putting it together. Right, right. So is that your normal process for developing a song, is to hear the beat first and then write? Uh, well, there's, there's, there's different processes. You know, one mm-hmm. thing is I have the ideas already. You know, I, I have all of the concepts that I would like to tackle. And then from there... Then I'll go to the studio and then kind of let the music talk to me. And, mm-hmm. you know, sometimes, though, I'll just hear a track and say, no, we got, I, I have to go in this direction. You know, this is speaking to me about this. And then, you know, I'll, I'll write it, you know, a day after or the night of uh, me hearing that particular track. Mm-hmm. Uh, but what I, what I normally do is, you know, I have the content, I have what I want to talk about, and I just go into the studio, pick the track, and then I... And then I'll write the lyrics so that I can write to the flow of the beat. But <clears throat> there's, there's not a definite way of I'm going to do it like this, I'm going to do it like that. You know, when you're doing music, you have to be creative. You kind of got to, you know, let everything come out of your heart. So, you, you know, you don't want to be too um, too robotic. But it was it's, it's definitely a process of knowing what I want to tackle, mm-hmm. hearing the music, and, and, and having all that come together. But that's interesting that you would say knowing what you want to tackle because you you have a huge impact um, with the music. It sounds good. And if we have it, I want to play a little bit of the Harriet Tubman song. And then I want to jump into Kings and Queens because my last name is King, first of all. I think that's so royal that you would talk about the kings and the queens of old. And I want to ask you, what impact has the has your music had on the youth and music fans of all ages? It's, it's a variety of impacts. You know, when you're talking about Kings and Queens, that's uh, from, from the Lesson One album. Um, as far as the youth is concerned, you know, I went into that specifically targeting um, the youth from urban areas. So, you know, I had them in mind when I was, as I'm making this music. So one of the things that has happened is I know kids, they learn, they actually learn from the music. So whether it's the first 25 presidents, whether it's kings and queens, whether it's the Moors, whether it's 50 capitals, you know, they actually learn from the music. Um, And that's, you know, I I appreciate that. And and the other aspect and and the other thing that's been happening is the hip hop audience just appreciates the sound that Mm -hmm. I'm coming up with. Mm-hmm. So on the one hand, you know, you do have people that's just actually learning from the lyrics that I'm putting out. And then on the other hand, you have actual people that's just um, that gravitates to the sound of hip hop music and they just appreciate it. Mm-hmm. So there's there's been this, uh, you know, this this reaction of, hey, I'm learning. And then there's the reaction of this actually sounds crazy. I, I like it a lot. Right. I've been getting both of those types of um, responses from whether it's young people, whether it's educators, whether it's uh-huh. parents, whether right. it's guidance counselors, mm-hmm. um, or whether it's just people that's just interested in, in, in hip-hop music. Right, because as I listened myself, I thought, oh, this is amazing. Like, But the first thing I noticed was the Thank beat. You. The beat was sick, and I was like, oh, I absolutely love this. Because it, it gave you, like you said, that balance of what you wanted to hear just to, to listen to and enjoy. But then you were learning something in the process. So I don't know if we've played the Kings and Queens track yet, but that's another one that uh, the beat was just amazing. But then the history and the knowledge that was there, it made me feel good about myself when I was done. 
And I think, you know, that's why we titled this show Music to Uplift. Because, you know, you want music where you can relax to, music where you can dance to. Um, but this is music where you can learn something to uplift and to become educated. By such a, a, a well-educated person, I was just at Rutgers University about four months ago. And um, okay. just phenomenal people. It was cold then, too. Mm, I cannot deal. <laughs> I cannot deal, but I really I enjoyed um, your music, and I want to help people find it. So where can we go to find your music and buy it and support you? Well, Lesson 1 and Lesson 2, you can find it on all your digital streaming platforms, from Tidal to Amazon to uh, Spotify. You know, uh, we just dropped Lesson 2 on um, February 13th. Uh, which was, was also my birthday that just passed. Oh, so, when was you your know, birthday? It's, Happy it's, birthday. It's incredible. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> um, it, it's, it's available everywhere. Every, okay. Everywhere that you can um, stream uh, music, we're there. Awesome. All right. So you heard it here. You can find his music everywhere. I found it on Instagram. Yes. I'm about to go buy it on Apple so that I can rock out. But I'm also going to play it in my educational settings. Uh, do you do that? Do you travel to the schools? Do you find teachers that really want to play this music as part of their lessons? Yes. Uh, you know, um, we formed this company in, uh, we formed the company in around 2010. The, okay. uh, the first album dropped in uh, 2012. You know, and from then, you know, we've been traveling pretty much across the world, going to different schools, whether it's high schools, whether it's middle schools. And then from then on, uh, the stages got a little bit bigger uh, from different colleges, and then the stages got a little bit bigger, and you know festivals, and, and whether it was a jazz festival, whether it was, uh, just all of um, the clubs, uh, hmm. you know, everywhere. There hasn't been a place that we that we haven't been able to to go into because I do think that we have such a unique sound mm -hmm. that it fits in a lot of environments. Right. You know, it's educational, so it's very family friendly. Mm -hmm. But it's, you still also hear uh, the, the hardcore hip hop element, which allows me to go into the other places that you don't normally hear positive right. or education hip hop music. Right. And I'm hoping that you'll have more opportunities to do that. I think the, the masses need to hear that encouraging, um, uplifting, educational hip hop music. Not to knock anything else that's out there, but we just need good variety of, and we need more good music. So we're going to close for now. I'm definitely going to invite you back again um, some other time. And maybe when you come back, I want to make sure I get this right. When you come back, I'm going to refer to you by Majestic Larry. Does that ring a bell? <laughs> I see you smiling. You want to know how I found this wow. out, don't you? <laughs> In like, in like 15 seconds, tell us about Majestic Larry the King. What is it? Oh, man. That was, uh, you, you got that from my, my friend Steve. Um, <laughs> one of the first uh, names, me and Steve, uh, him, myself, my man, Tyke Belford, and my man, Dave Halsey, we're all still friends to this day. We met in the seventh grade. And we actually formed this group called the Fourth Dimension. That's what it and, is. The uh, fourth dimension. My name was um, uh, the Majestical King Larry, but um, <laughs> you know that 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 didn't last long. <laughs> well, I think you guys were but, like uh, in um, seventh yeah. grade from the story that I heard. Seventh so grade. yeah, seventh so grade. I definitely yeah. want to hear more about uh, that in the next same time. Home room together. Yeah. <laughs> definitely, definitely. We're in the same home room. It's but um, I'll just say this: I, I do want everybody to check out. Check out the, uh, the Instagram, it's Smart Hip Hop on Instagram. Check out the website, it's www.smart-hiphop.com. And, you know, just enjoy the music. Lesson 2 is out right now. It came out February 13th. It features uh, Talib Kweli, Beats from Megahertz, uh, Capone yes. from CNN. You know, it's, it's a crazy project, and um, it just dropped. Amazing. Thank you so much. All right, you heard it Appreciate here first. It. You can go and check that out there. And we will hear from you again, Locke, Majestical Definitely. Larry, <laughs> the Majestical King Larry. But we know you yeah, as a Locke yeah. right now, and you're killing the game. Thank you so much for all that you do. 
And thank you, our Appreciate viewers, it. for watching. You've been watching At the Crossroads with me, Keisha King, your host. I'm here every Wednesday live at 5. I am always pushing you to the limits. To this week's call to action is very simple. Read a book and enjoy the music while you're here. Aloha. See you next week.